Here we go. Um, so I, I kind of brought this down real quick and I'm gonna put up the watercolor paper and just show you real quick. <clears throat> I might need to bring this down a little bit for you. And um, it doesn't take a bit of time, but what I love about these Derwents is they're so bright and they keep that bright color. And uh, I love it. I've actually been using, it saves you a little bit of time too because you don't have to chew up some of your hard pastels. Um, and these are reasonably priced. I got them on Amazon, so, but. Now, are, are, are they actual pastels? No, this is ink. This is compressed ink. And they're like sticks and they kind of feel a little oily. I'll take a picture, but they're not. Um, here, Jeannie. So could, could, I, could I use my like watered down colored ink on the watercolor paper and then use the gesso? Would that work yep. as well? Yep. Okay. That's what I, <clears throat> but you can see how the brightness of these, mm -hmm. I mean. Particularly once you wet them, they get even brighter. Yeah, the, it's amazing. Um, I love it. I just absolutely love it. And you can just, I mean, I know sometimes getting supplies are, it's kind of hard. Um, and I'm always like, I love trying out new things. And yes. so I'll show you. So this is just water, just regular water I just put in here and I, I'm just using a fan brush, but you can use whatever you want. And you just wet it. And it's, I mean, it doesn't take long for it to dry. And you can smooth it out. And then once it dries, you can just lay your, your gesso right over the top. Look, you can blend. It's so fun. Just like that. Um, and then once it dries, and so I'll show you what it looks like when it's dried. Um, I'll take a picture of it. So once this dries, then you would apply that clear gesso that I showed you um, that has that grit in it. And this is what it looks like again. So once this dries, then you'll apply that clear gesso over it and it will create that grit, just like your sanded paper. So try it out. Um, and you can cut these into pieces that you want. You can draw with these, um, these pieces. Of course, they come in longer sticks, but I broke them in half. I mean, they have longer sticks like this. They come, um, I break them in half. I like using them just like the pastels, but definitely try it. Uh, I just thought of it this morning. I'm gonna do an alcohol wash for our underpainting, but um, try this out and send me some pictures if you guys get a time that you can get it and, and see what you think. Um, and I can send you a link for those. Sometimes it's hard to get them on Amazon. I know for those overseas. Um, so I can see if I can find it somewhere else. But I'll let this dry and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, let's get on to our painting. So I'm using the uh, UART 400 sanded grit paper. And I just did a little outline for the painting. Can everyone see okay? Okay. Yes. Good. 
So I have some colors that I chose just to use for um, the underpainting. I'll send you a little picture. These are all, um, all hard pastels. So I will begin. I need more more room in here. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use the purple up here where I see more of that purple uh, blue up here in the right hand corner. So I'm just going to lay some of that in. And I'm just kind of thinking directional these clouds are kind of laying here and I'm thinking about how I'm going to lay those clouds on top. So always in the direction. Very light touch. You can still see my <clears throat> pastel paper underneath. Um, I'm going to switch to blue now. I'm kind of coming in here. Thinking about where my son is. Kind of more over in here. And I come in here. And I'm kind of just following the direction of the clouds, thinking about laying it out. I'm going to switch to some orange. I hear a kitty. Get a flat edge here. Always go bolder and brighter because you can always tone it down as we lay colors. I'm preserving this area where the sun's gonna be for my lightest lights. So I'm not going to lay the orange down in there. We've got just a sliver of the land down below. So I'm just kind of using the blue pastel. not too worried about that. And then I'm going to use my light orange and I'm not going to come into where that sun is. I'm just going to kind of come around the edges and Just kind of like that. I might come back in with a little more blue up here. A little more purple. It is pretty dark up here in the upper sky area. Okay, notice how I didn't put the lighter orange up here because the idea is that we want to get our base and these lights we're going to lay over the top like we've been doing in the last classes. So I know sometimes that's where our brain wants to go is to bring in those light pieces but we're gonna we're gonna affix this to to the sanded paper like we do with alcohol washes and then we can drift some of these lighter colors over the top and it's gonna make this pop way more than if we were to lay it in right now. 
uh, when we're doing an alcohol or like an underpainting, if we were to just be not using an underpainting, then we would leave this area open because we would be knitting those colors up against those edges. So this is something to think about whether we're gonna do an underpainting or not. Um, and so I thought in this case with this <clears throat> picture, we could really get that um, feathery look, that airy look of the pastel over the, the wash. So that's why I chose the underpainting for today. Um, but I encourage you after today, if you have time to try it without doing an underpainting and really we're working on the blending piece of it, right? The soft edges. Um, and if you zoom into this picture, when you start picking out colors for your palette, you can see how many different colors are in this picture. It doesn't seem, you just look at it and you think that's gonna be way too easy to do. And that's gonna take no time. But when you zoom in and you're looking at all those layers and thinking how you're going to build up those layers, there's a lot more to it. And that's, that's kind of why I'm doing this is because at first I was like, this is too easy. And then you get into it, right? And you're like, whoa. So it is good to have these, what you think is gonna be way too easy, pick it, choose it. Because that's when you really get into it and you realize it's, ah, I probably should work at this. There's a little bit more structure to it than I thought. So um, go ahead and send me what you have for uh, your block in. And don't be afraid to lay in your, your darker pastel at the top. It's gonna dry just a little bit lighter than normal. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna get my container ready for the alcohol piece of it. Yeah, good, Jeannie. And you can even, if you have deeper colors, you can even drop them in orange, orangey colors too. Yeah, good, Well, That looks really good. Uh, let me grab here and I'll send you what I have so you can see mine too. I have to show you, um, I mean, it still stayed really bright. Look at that, and it's dry. That's what I love about these ink tents blocks. See how bright that is? Good, Julia. Okay. Very cool. I kind of started using a fan brush. You can really see it in these ink tints that I did on the watercolor. Can you see like the texture and the mark making it makes? I kind of like it. Versus like a flat brush that I've used in the past. So if you do have a uh, fan brush to use, try it out. I kind of been having fun like using them and they, they give a, this is nothing expensive. Okay, I'm gonna start in, if everyone's ready. starting with our lightest lights. Just scrubbing. Mm 
Yeah. And I like the drips. So don't be don't be afraid. Thinking about the direction. That's what I love about this, the direction of all of these clouds, the wispiness. Cuz this is kind of like our road map. You know, we're blocking in, but it's to remind us how we want it to be. And take your time. I'm just lightly brushing. But the fan brush almost makes it fun because it's like wispy like the clouds. I'm really enjoying it. I'm bringing it out here. And it's, I love the layering of the purple and the blue. It's gonna be pretty. Now we're kind of going vertical here. In one class, I can show you guys how to mount a sanded paper if that's something you would like to learn. Um, I've done that with my smaller pieces. It's kind of nice. You can just slip it right into a frame. But the UR, I know people get a little frustrated because when you're working on it, sometimes it buckles when you get it really wet. And I'm using a lot of alcohol right now. And I can I can tell that it buckles a little bit. So if you mount it on like a foam core board or gator board, kind of helps without getting that buckling. And you're gonna notice this technique is a lot like when we were doing the waves. You know paying attention to the way that the water is moving. It's the same with the sky. What's great about this is we get this beautiful mark making underneath and you really don't need to do a whole lot on top sometimes if you get this underpainting just right. Plus, I like these drips. <laughs> They're kind of fun. We'll come down here in the dark. There's just a little bit of land down here. You can put it in or you don't have to. You can do completely sky. It's up to you. And that's kind of why I leave room on my paper, because sometimes I'm just going to need that more that space, or I'm going to decide, oh, I do need to add a little bit more of that land in here. That makes more sense. So it's not until you get into the painting that you think, okay, I'm going to need that. I'm just kind of coming in here and lightening up a little bit in this area here is not as dark and then kind of up in here okay. I'm just lifting off a little bit
You know, the fan brush actually would be really good doing trees. So, you know, where you're like pushing up and you get that, you can make some really nice movement with the trees and create that nice base. It's kind of cool. Kind of like coming up here, swooping out. Okay. Let this dry here. I'll take a picture. So I pulled out a few um, colors. Let's see here. I'll send over, oh, pretty genie. I love it. Good. So when we, when you get into your underpainting, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work those edges so I would try and uh, lift a little bit of the purple to the yellow if you can Jean, just a tad but you don't have to like see how I have a really hard line what I'm going to have to do is really work hard at blending over that just so it it's not dividing really it would as you dry you can see how it can um, you know like if I lift some of this to make it a little softer transition it's gonna be easier when I lay that color over the top um, than having that really bright, uh, I guess, line, so to speak. See, and I'm, I can still lift off a little bit because it's still wet. Um, Yeah, and um, kind of get it to where it's not going to be too bright of a transition here. That's okay. Looks like I have two UFOs flying here or something. <laughs> uh, I probably should have used the lighter color to say this is where my son's going to go. I'm going to blame it on uh, partying too much for my birthday last night. <laughs> <laughs> Even I get really, so see the difference, Jeannie, how that, that transition is just a little bit softer. And um, so when we lay that color on, it's it, it, you're not going to see too much of a stark line. Mm -hmm. um, good. How's everyone else doing? You can go ahead and send through uh, what you have. Mine's still drying. That's the only downside, right, of doing a wash. But I've got some colors here. Let's see. Some blues. And I'm just going to send you a picture of these so you can see. difference. I've got some purple moving down a little bit grayed. I'm 
This always helps too, sometimes when I can do my underpainting and then lay some of the colors that I've chosen to see, hmm, maybe that's too close in value or uh, that's too bright uh, or that's not gonna work. So, you can see some of these colors here. Also showing the warm and the cool of the purples. Got some bright pinks. Peaches. Oh, I already did that one. Okay, almost dry. Let me see what. Ooh, good. Well. So I also have this brush, uh, like, like a little craft brush that helps too, that you can soften uh, the edges um, right in here where your darks meet your lights. Just, just softening them a little bit if you can. If it's dry, that's not, it's fine. That's kind of what I had Jeannie do. Because um, when we lay, when we whisk these colors across it, it will, um, you'll see that gradation of, of value um, in that blending versus a light and then a line and then a dark. And here is um, some of the pastels that I did on the side here kind of helps when you see them laid out like, oh, this is a cooler, this is more muted and warm. So when we're thinking color wise, we're warmer as we move down to the horizon and cooler as we move up. And so as we're picking the colors, it's good to, to put them out here and see them side by side. Cause sometimes when they lay next to each other, they're gonna be different. They're gonna look different. And so, um it's important to to do that and then i've got a few of the yellows and we may say okay this is i mean that looks like the same and then i have a brighter yellow that's almost too yellow so see It's good to have these areas where you can try out. That might be a little bit better. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So see how that top, that top yellow that I put down is really bright and that might be okay in the center of our sun. <clears throat> but if you look at the picture, it is learning how to blend out from that center of that sun. Okay. So let's begin. I'm going to start uh, at, the, at the top and kind of work my way down a little bit. So I've got some of those blues that I've laid out. And I'm just going to lightly drift over that purple and boy, does that look cool. And I'm just kind of very light touch. Kind of seeing where it starts here, kind of come down into here. 
kind of pulling down with my pastel. This is a soft pastel. And then kind of coming in at an angle a little bit here. Got some more up in here. Just lightly drifting. I have not blended with my hand or anything yet. This is the hard pastel that we used in the um, underpainting. And I'm just kind of bringing that in in the corner here. where it's a little darker, using the edge. Okay. And over here to the left, we've got more of a warm and lighter. So I'm gonna go warm I'm going to go a little darker than the light, the actual finish, because then we're going to drift the lighter blue over the top. So I'm going to come and blend these two blues. Looking where that light pink hits in the center. Just, and then we'll work to shade lighter of the blue. We'll drift a little bit up into here. Just a little bit up in here. Kind of radiating out from the center. Yeah light using my finger just a little bit to blend and uh, there we go okay I'm going to take a picture here nice Julia So I'm just using very light touch and then we just kind of keep working in. This is a just a lighter, just another shade lighter of blue. Almost like a purpley blue, like a periwinkle. Go ahead and send in where, where you're at. Let me see. Yeah. Woo! I love it, Jeannie. Not too turquoise on the left? No. And so, and why it's not is because as we move down to the horizon, it does get more teal, more turquoise. It's warmer, right? Mm -hmm. And so now you're going to be really working to knit those two colors, that light and that, and that darker blue together on the side. Mm -hmm. So the way we're doing that is we're just kind of slowly, lightly drifting our colors within and you can kind of drag your finger a little bit to blend just lightly. Um, so like over here on the right hand side, go ahead and just kind of drag that blue down a little bit so that you don't have such a line there and then take some of that teal because we do have, so it's kind of bright over here and you can take even uh, some purple, like a, a purpley blue, uh, maybe the same value as your turquoise on this side. You see, do you see how it's a little bit more purpley and blue on this side versus over here? 
on the left. So, so use maybe like, like this purpley and bring it right up into that blue. You see? And then we're going to lay some, some pink over that. Oops. It's kind of a back and forth, right? We're, we're working back and forth, very light. That's why it's deceiving when we think this is going to be an easy painting because we're we're constantly going light and then back to the darker color and I'm letting some of this underpainting show through because it, it does have a little bit of that darker value and as I move down into here I'm just kind of laying in my my light blue right maybe a little bit of it down in here and I'll lay a darker color over that And we're even a shade lighter on that blue. Let me see what I have here. It's almost lighter than that. A lot of times I'll take my color and then I'll hold up the color just to say, oh, that's not lighter. Okay. Let's see. That's lighter, right? You can see. So now I'm going to test it up here and say, because we're kind of moving towards the sun and we need to kind of get a little lighter and warmer. So I'm going to drift a little bit of this just very lightly. right into here. Right on the outskirts. And even some right in here. Going in the same direction of the movement of the clouds. Drift some in here. like that. Create a little bit of texture. Okay. So that's, you see the, the, the shift change of the value of that blue and light blue. And then I used my finger to kind of just move it like this, just kind of a little bit where it just kind of feather it in there. You can use whatever you have for blending, but not too much, just a little, because I like that texture in here too. But I'm softening it on the edges because we're gonna lay that peachy color over it. I probably want that more textured because the more textured this lightest cloud is gonna really bring it forward. So otherwise, if we have too much texture here, meaning where you can see, you can see the underpainting and then this color, and then if, it, if it's like that, the entire painting, it competes with each other. So when we have, let's say you're doing a tree and you're painting the tree and you have the sky behind, we make the sky smooth, no texture, and then we make that tree textured. So it's, it's also not competing in that way. So that's kind of what I want you to think about when we're doing our sky here, is kind of smooth it out a little bit. Um, and as we do that, it will, uh, it will help bring our, our lights that we lay over the top. It'll just make them pop more too. I'm kind of just 
laying a little more darker blue, purpley blue in here. And then we've got that kind of bright blue radiating out over that purple. I kind of want, I want that. I'm just pulling it up just like that, softening hey, hey, the hey. edges. Just softening a little bit here. Okay. I like that. I like skies. I love doing clouds. Okay. Almost feel like kind of even a shade lighter down in down in here. Not too much. Eh, that might be a little too purple. Let's see here. And there we go. And then come back over it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Got our blue. Kind of blending out, making this work a little bit more. It's still pretty dark over on this side. I'm going to leave that. Just keep working this edge here. Switching back and forth. Just the light change just one value darker than, and you can really get some nice gradations of color. And that's what we want here. That movement. And then also the pressing, the harder you press the light, the light you press, I mean, there's there's that pressure of, of the pastel too, you know, where I really want more color and where I want it just lighter and drifter. So that's another thing to think about when we're laying in our, our pastel. I always start out very light because you're learning what each pastel does too. Some of these, like the Terry Ludwigs, they are really soft and they'll just lay in a ton of color right away. And you might not want that. And so, just looking around to see where I can drift some of this other color in. Go ahead and I'm gonna stop and you send me in pictures where you're at if you have any questions. And I really want to lay in these light, light colors. We're going to start in on these peaches down to the horizon of the, the warm oranges. Oops. Hit the wrong button here. Good, well, ooh, I like that. Don't you just love those colors over the orange and the yellows and and very good movement. You're paying attention to where the clouds are, the direction that they're going. Very nice mark making. Good. And so the uh, purple, where the purple here and the blue off to the side, that's where you can drift some of the, the that blue to take away that line. 
So go ahead and just bring some of that darker blue right over over that division and, and that will will blend it and make it all one. Same kind of up here in the top piece with that blue that you're using, that light and then the dark blue, that's really pretty. Those are really working well. I will send mine, but I have like the wrong paper because my delivery was late. Oh, and it, yes, and I oh. had to improvise. So, oh my gosh! So I don't. This one is a bit weird. So this Ooh. is. Oh, I love it though. It's interesting, oh, wow. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's like cosmic. <laughs> I was just gonna say so. Um. Uh, my mom lives up in Alaska and they're getting ready to head back up there. And um, I guess last night I belonged to some of the Facebook pages and there was a huge show of the Northern Lights like all yeah. over. And that's what makes me think of it. Like, <laughs> so cool. Okay. So what uh, yeah. paper are you using, Natalia? Uh, it's a bit textured. Okay. And it's this one. I don't know if you. Oh, OK. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's it's put. Yeah. What is it, Sandra? I think it's put a lot of people off pastels. But it's not that paper. It, yeah, it's not grippy enough. It's textured, but it hasn't got enough sand in it, you know, enough. Um, isn't it amazing that how if you don't have the right grit or paper it it can get frustrating but, yeah. but you sometimes it, yeah go ahead sorry i'm just thinking of an artist who's now really fantastic he was an oil painter and he switched to pastels a few years ago and he said he had tried it years and years ago but he was using this and it completely put him off and he didn't try again for years and now he's uh -huh. fantastic at it so it's amazing wow. it can have a big difference, make a big difference. I, I will say, I mean, it's not my first paper, so I know I can, <laughs> I know the difference now. <laughs> right? Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're doing good with your mark making and your blending though, Natalia. It's just beautiful. And look at Jeannie's. Woo! That is fun. I love those colors. Look at the purple over that blue. Isn't that cool? I love it. And you're really paying attention to the values. Very nice. Yeah. So, Maria, I'm going to send you mine, but I'm, I'm really late. This is only my underpainting because I was oh, yeah. messing around with something I just received. Oh, of course. Um, of course. So I missed part of the instructions. Oh, you're, you're fine. See, we, we get to do and practice and have fun in here. Nothing has to be exact. That's, okay. that's the whole fun of it. Um, oh, there it is. Uh, woo, I love it. Look at that. Oh, good. I wasn't sure I was on the right track. No, you're, you are. So, I mean, what we want to do, right, on our, our underpainting is what we've been learning is that's kind of like our, our roadmap, and it's giving you, it's telling you, okay, we've got darker values here, we've got lighter values here, it shows you the direction, right, we're running our brushes in the direction of how we want our clouds or whatever subject you're painting, and it also helps um, thinking about what color we're going to lay on top of it because as you know if it's just white paper and you lay that red it's not going to do much but if let's say you laid down its complementary color of green and you did an underpainting of green and you laid that that red on it it's just going to make it so much more bright and vibrant and it's just amazing how and some some artists don't even do an underpainting and that's fine. Some people, they just enjoy doing it, just not toned. Um, I just find that I get a lot more texture and a lot more vibrancy. Um, I enjoy doing, I feel that that's an important part of it. Um, but I think you did great, Sandra. And so, oh, yeah, you, you can just start laying in the colors. 
Uh, we're going to start, so you've got your underpainting, so start up in the sky and maybe add some more darker um, purples and blues and paying attention to the way the clouds are. How are you doing, Nina? I, I didn't see you pop in there. I haven't seen yours. Go ahead and send over what you have. <laughs> um, and so we're going to kind of start working down into the, the bottom part where the sun is. And then at the very end, we'll work from the sun up into the sky. And I'll show you kind of what I'm going to do with those pastels to get that really nice um, kind of like textured look with the wispy clouds. You can also use fixative too. Um, that's always an option if you start losing the tooth on your paper. And Natalia, you might be needing that too with some type of fixative if you feel like you're you're not able to get much um, pastel down. Mm -hmm. well, I yeah. Got it, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, let's see here. I've got Molly saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> Little stinker. How old is she now? She just turned a year on March 4th. We've been oh, doing- oh. Uh, So she's a Pisces as well. She is, and she's such a lover. Um, we've been taking dog training classes. Really, they're training me. I'm the problem. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's usually the human who gets trained. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And, and But she's doing so good, and she has little friends that she's met. But, of course, you know, we're in class, and they got to do their job, right? It's no playtime. So she just sits there and, you know, lays down and she's just, she's, I've really lucked out. She's a very good dog um, for a lab being a puppy. She's not like crazy running around. Um, she does, but she's really picked up. So I'm, I am glad I decided to do it. I was a little hesitant, but. Um, you get a dog, you mean, or to do the training? Well, I, my dad's here recuperating from his surgery, and then I decided to sign up for dog training lessons at the same time among trying to get my oldest ready for college. And I'm thinking, what am I doing to myself? <laughs> <laughs> but I have you guys to look forward to on Sundays. This is like my, my brain break. <laughs> so but she's doing really good. I'm, I'm very, very happy. Okay, so I'm laying in some really, gosh, this is kind of like a pinky, peachy, very light value. And I'm going to maybe start over here in the center a little bit. And this picture I printed out, my printer isn't that great. I ought to just look at my actual um good grief doggy poo okay so, ooh, this is going to be kind of fun off this orange boy that makes it really pretty and this is what's amazing okay so Really zoom in on the picture because when you look off to the right over here on this, this area right here, look at all of the movements those clouds are doing. You do not see it really until you zoom in. So that is kind of what you want to do is really just create that. Whooping. That is so cool. Yeah. Okay.
I'm just kind of need to get a flat, flat piece, flat place on this. Okay, oops. Kind of comes down into here too. Kind of squinting my eyes a little bit. Helps me not get too into the details either. Which I'm known to do. I want to. Okay. Let's even get some peachier. Let's see what's that. Even a warmer. You might be able to hear my dad snoring. I'm not sure. Sorry if you can. No, we can't hear. He's supposed to be babysitting the peppers, but. I think it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we don't wake him up. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> I hear him song logs over here. So, okay, let's see here. So I'm just going a, a value darker, and it almost is the same value as that orange, but that's okay. It lays. It's like a peach on top, and I'll, I'll send a picture here, and I'm just putting in little bits here and there this kind of has like a straighter edge so um okay so let's see here i have okay it up. Okay. And how about some purple? Oh, that's a little too light. That's pretty bright, but we can tone that down a little bit. I'd rather go a little brighter and then be able to knock it back than go too light and then you're layering and layering and layering. It just gets a little difficult Okay, that's kind of like a, oh, more muted blue, purple here. Let's see. Okay. All right. Let's get that sun in. So I'm going to start on the outer edges and they're going to be a little bit darker because we haven't got to that bright, bright spot. I'm just kind of going outwards. Darker yellow. And then as we move in, it's going to just be a brighter yellow. Kind of need to have that that cloud for more of a reference. This is like a a muted purpley blue. That's very very light and. Felt like we kind of needed to 
get that in before I really place the sun. Okay. Kind of cools down a little bit out here, huh? Okay. All right, now, let's get some of this peachy. And let's get in just a lighter color of that. Yellow. And what's there? <clears throat> Not really pressing hard right now. Um, I will here shortly. I kind of just want to build the color around it. And I'm going to go back in with that really light, um, when we did that underpainting, that light orange. I'm using the hard pastel, and I'm just kind of coming in around the rayed edging of that sun. And kind of pulling up into that peach. just a little bit. Um, okay, I'm gonna take a picture where I'm at so I can show you. Yeah, send, send in where you're at. Um, Yeah, there we go. Let's see, almost like a pinky. It's a, see, it's just amazing how many colors are in this. That's what I love about it. One of the parts of doing these uh, clouds that we're learning is the blending and using these colors to intermix with each other. And when you're drifting like the lighter colors over the darker colors, you're blending those edges and you're getting a color that you can't just pick out of your box. You're just softening the edges. And I can show you here um, what I've just done with this pink stick. And it's just really what I love about pastels is that you don't even have to use your finger. And it's just, it just really, really makes it beautiful. And you can just press those harder lights right along the edge of the mountain where it's bouncing off and kind of right underneath we have that oops make sure you wash your hands before you touch the sun eight okay This is kind of like a muted purple. Okay, let me see here. Okay. 
good. Good, Will. So now take your orange and your purple, and so so you see like these edges. Can you let me see if I get it right here? Yeah, I can see. So see the light and dark. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge those edges together, and you can take a a, a little bit lighter of a purple, or you can do a little lighter of. Um, the yellow, I would say lighter purple. And what happens is, is, is that you get this really pretty gradation. And so if you took a, a lighter purple and just went, you know, right, right on that edge, just very lightly, you'll get a nice, a nice transition blend. Yeah. <clears throat> and we're just, that's what we're doing. We're just working those those edges, and you can use your finger a little bit. Go ahead and and send in what you have, and because yeah, it's this is the fun part where we're just blending these and kind of. Work in the edges. And see that kind of gets orangey and Peachier. Don't really have the right. Let's see what this is. I might be good down in here. Lightly working that edge of the purple. All about edges. Let me move into like a, oh, let's see. Might work okay here. Let's see. Kind of pulling in some of this peachier color next to this purple, and then I'll lighten it up just a little bit more. You can drift it right over that. Come in here, my lighter blue. Kind of curving, just like that. Just a back and forth, back and forth. And 
Okay. Oh, good, Nina. Good. Oh, yeah. Good, Sandra. So all you have to do, Sandra, right? Like those values are perfect. I love how you're laying in uh, the direction of the clouds. And so now we're just kind of blending upon those edges. So like where, where your dark purple is here. Right. right. So let's just then bring in some light, just a, a value lighter underneath that, that cloud. And we're just, you're just going to start blending into that peachy color and, and soft you did. So look at the left-hand side where you have that orange next to that purple line. Mm -hmm. See what you did. That's exactly what you want to do over on the other side. Thank you. Yeah. Really good blending and that, that blue up top. Yeah. Because remember, clouds are soft edges. I know it's, this is the, the, the techniques of blending and working those, those, col those colors within each other, the, the knitting together to where it's not a hard line. Got it. But Thank gradating, you. yeah. Even like when we have this blue, right, and this pink, light pink, and you want to make a really hard line. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that lighter pastel and just kind of drift over it. So it's going to look like a hard line, but really we did not take the, the pastel and draw it in. And that's what I mean. I'm trying to think what, Pinky, isn't it? Might be where we have like a couple colors with each other. This is just a hard pastel and it's, um, I'd say a medium value in, in pink. We really have that illuminating pink off to the side, but that's too dark and almost like a purpley pink. Maybe even something like this. I'm just drifting over the blue. See how it's showing the blue underneath. That's why we want the underpainting to be to be um, smooth. So you can see this texture. A little darker in here. I'm use I'm pressing a little harder down down into this area. And now I need to work that darker area, but with the clouds here. This is a warmer pink. Um, I'll show you compared to this. See the difference. These colors, you see the So the middle one is what I ended up choosing to put up into the sky for the cloud. And I know it, it looks dark, but if I were to choose the one to the right here, it would be way too light and then it wouldn't look right. I'm going to just fade this out. This is my orange. I don't want that. Let's see here. I think that's too dark. And 
this is like a peachy and I'm I'm gonna use the edge of my pastel and I'm just gonna kind of lightly press and then pull up press and pull up get that directional and I'm kind of wiping off this because it's pulling up some of that blue. Kind of bring it down into here. There we go. Come back in with my blue and I'm just blending. Back and forth. There we go. I think I'm going to go back to that peach. Kind of come out into here. There we go. I'm just going to get oranger right down in here. I'm going to press a little harder because it's more dense, the clouds. I'm pressing a little harder. I'm going to come up a little bit and then I'm going to switch. I'm going to go to a purple because we're getting a little bit cooler up into the skies. Not so much the brights. right over those blues Just like that oh what did I do with my oh here's my phone okay oh huh. yeah oh I like that Natalia in the center look at the turquoise and the yellows <laughs> I love it have you did you spray it yet yes I did I think yeah. I need to do it one more time but in a second yeah that's a good idea because you're gonna keep from getting too much mud mm -hmm. uh, you can keep layering that texture so yeah, if you have some, uh, even like a lighter, like that purple you use down on the bottom, even you used a little bit up in the top. Yeah, drifting right up into the top of the sky. Mm -hmm. That is really pretty. Right over that dark, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. I'll take that, it. That it is. Fun it is. <laughs> it is. See, I love, uh, see how the smoothness, I just sent the picture. So see how the smoothness, and then if you zoom in and you take that pastel over the top, it gives you, it gives you that texture and look how it pushes forward. And then what we want to do is work the edges. So meaning 
where that contrast is, the lights and the darks, the really light and the really dark. We haven't got to the bright, bright sun yet, but we're working on it. And sometimes it's not even yellow, yellow. That's the other part. That's kind of what I'm seeing right now. It's it's not a real, um, it is yellow, but it's, I almost have too much of a yellow tint to it where it kind of needs to be more of an orange. Good. Nice, Sandra. Yeah. So take some of your um, lighter colors in the center now and you can kind of just uh, drift over your purples, just like you did up in your sky. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that at the very top. Don't you love that blue and the pink and the yellow? Woo! Mm. I love it. Yeah, I love that texture. That's really pretty. It's amazing how it looks different in picture than when you look at it. I have to kind of keep looking for my camera. Oh, yes. Isn't that crazy? That is very weird. I agree. Well, so I guess when I'm... Go ahead. Sorry, I guess it's the equivalent of looking from across the room, you know? It is good. Um, it's good to kind of squint and get up and like move away from your painting sometimes. Um, I think for like in our class, that's about the time when we get done. It, it's good to just stop and, and step away. Um, but even like right now, I'm looking at my painting through on the screen and I, that's where I can tell that my yellow is too yellow. It really needs to be more on the orange side. Um, and that's just like, you know, drawing a tree and making it look like a Christmas tree. Your brain just takes over and says, sun, yellow. And so even I do it. Um, so I need to go in there and adjust, adjust that. <clears throat> and I may kind of brush some of this off. Uh, this is just a, a dry brush. And kind of just tapping it off. And yeah. Which is fine. Just was too yellow. And then I can get into that really pretty peachy color right underneath that. They say sometimes that you can see things that, like turn have a mirror behind you. So when you're working, you can you can see things better that don't look, whoops, that's too, that don't look right. Oh, right, yeah, I use the camera. It's amazing, just looking for it. Right? I mean, what, and I do the same when I do my cats. I, oh, okay. Like when I, pull, you know, I take a break, I have a cup of tea and I take a picture before and then I look at it and it's just completely different than just looking at it with my, with my eyes. See, you can see what you need to do next, what the mistakes are. Yep. Yep. It is amazing. It's useful when you're working alone, you don't have somebody to kind of bounce it off. Exactly. Yep. It is good to have. I um especially in this class, I can really see things when I have it up on the screen. And I'm looking at you and then I'm, I can see what I've done. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. This needs to be changed. 
change, just like the sun piece of it. And, you know, even like this cloud here. Just, yeah, blending. Okay. I'm going to make it a little bit softer right in there. and get my um, bright, bright color in. But even up in here, have some of these clouds coming down in. Get my side a little better. Yep. And then you cut, and this is where you work back and forth on those edges, right? So you kind of bring in, that's too bright, come back in with my light blue. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, not too much. And let's see here. I'll get a little bit more of the peachy down in here. Not here, sweetheart. really is a pretty sunset. Boy, all these different colors. Get to have fun bringing in just a little bit more. Now we're just working these edges and I'm just pressing a little bit harder. Not too much. Which color are you using there? That's like a really light, kind of peachy color. Yeah, that's what. I'm struggling with that bit in the middle. Yep, that's what you want. Start with the light, uh, like mid-tone peachy color and then work 
out a little bit lighter and like I've got some of this orangey color and I'm kind of just bringing it down a little bit into here and working the edge of that sky, just a, like the cloud, that dark cloud. carving in some of those areas. Um, and then coming back down in here, really kind of orange down in there. This light. And then I'll go, let's see. Shade lighter. This is like a pinky color. Let's kind of come around here. Bring in just a little bit of this light right underneath that. Working those edges. And let's see. I press a little hard where that sun is. Okay, gets pretty bright right in there. And I, I do have um, see if this, and I am pressing hard. I mean, when you're in the sun piece, but it's not the right color. I'm going to pop this right underneath it. It's like a bright lemon yellow almost, just a little bit. There you go. No walking in the picture. You what? Sorry, I was telling the cat not to walk in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Your little helpers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see if that. Okay. Let me see. Oh, Jeannie. Yeah. Woohoo. Look at those. I love it. That's beautiful. Wow. It looks like a photograph. Yeah. Very good job. I don't, I don't like the three fingers at the top. You don't? No. I kind of like it because uh, it's not distracting, but what you can do, I think because you feel, is it because you think that like they're the same, like yeah, width? Like, that's the little soldiers in this one. Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, what you can do is take some of your, um, your purple and mm -hmm. just kind of drift over a little bit. Um, do you see that purple you use to the left on top of that pink kind of mm -hmm. on the edge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can bring some of that purple up over it, um, and darken just a little bit of it and keep the lighter areas so you can adjust the width. 
Thank you. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. It really is. This is, it, it takes a lot of work to blend these edges, right? And I mean, we we don't want what I've always said. We don't want worms. So if you see hard, long lines, what I'm talking about, like like this, we we don't want those hard, long lines like that. Here, I'll make it darker so you see it. So if you have those indicating where uh, you know these pieces like this, these clouds down the in the bottom, we still want those soft edges. So take your finger and you can kind of just blend softly on, on on those edges to to soften. See see how that diffuses that line a little bit and doesn't make it so strong and really draw your eye to it. So if you have those really dark lines, go back in there and soften them with your finger or with a lighter pastel on those edges. You want to blend those out a little more. Speaking of blending, I got this tiny foam on Ooh. like a brush. It's so cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, where did That's you find huge. that? I love it. Yeah, it's a local store here. So I don't know for what this should be used for, but <laughs> it works for pastel very well. It just What a great, yeah. And it's a great size. Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> Is it like, oh. is it thick or is it like thin like a brush? Is it I'll thick? I'll send you a picture. I will send yeah, you I want to see it. It's fun. It's called a foam brush, kind I think. But it's in Polish, but I would oh, okay. it like this. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> That's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. How fun. I, oh, yeah. It looks really cool on your uh, sitting on top of your painting. Is that your painting? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it. Way to be creative. You know, got to use whatever you can. Did that work, Jeannie? Changing it a little bit? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you know, as you can see down here on the bottom piece with the painting, uh, where the sun is meeting the, the horizon, there is a lot of value change, color changes and value changes. So, you know, it, it, like I said, when you first look at the picture, it doesn't seem that way. But when you zoom in and you're really looking and thinking about as you get down to the sun, it's getting warmer, right? And it's radiating these these really beautiful colors out, these really pretty pinks and peaches. So this is where you really are gonna work those, those edges um, and making them not so harsh, uh, like I showed you with that line. So if you have anything that, that is too harsh like that, blend it out with your finger. Um, as you can see down at the very bottom, it's more muted, right? So you have this almost like a, a, a red purpley color. Um, if you don't have that in your pastel, go ahead and, and take some of your darker purple and then take some of your uh, lighter purple over it, maybe even add a little bit of orange and it will create that color. Test it off to the side here too. Um, I know I have a little bit greater range and colors that I can pick from, but sometimes I don't even have what I want. Um, and I've got to kind of learn to, to blend and layer these colors with each other to create what I want. Um, and even like, yeah, down in here, it's just amazing the, the 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 shifts of color with these purples. It's really fun. This is 
such a good exercise and really learning how to blend. And for those who actually do um, oil painting or watercolor painting, it's the same idea. Your stick is like your brush. It's just an extension, right? And we're going to get even brighter right below the sun. Kind of have these bright colors. Kind of. here and they come up in here. I'm just tapping to soften. Then I come back in. That's too dark. So let's see. That's why I like these hard pastel. Oh, Sandra, I just got a couple of the Geralt's. Oh, what do you think? Well, I'm gonna try it out right now. Oh, okay. So I have because you told me you love these, right? Yes, but because it's uh, because I like details, so I don't know how well it works for landscape when you're working loose. It's almost like, um, it's almost like a soft. I I don't know. I I can see why you like it for the the detail. It's sort of soft and dense, and yeah. then it gives you a detail. Um, yeah. I got three colors. Let's see, I got a dark blue, a purple, what else? And like a light turquoise. Right. I'm actually working with different pastels today because I've, I figured, yes, my palette is very much geared towards animals. So I well, have a lot of gloves. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, I think it's good. I mean, that's, I'm trying to expand myself on trying out different um, different brands. I um, I got what was it? The Blue Earth. I've never used those. I, uh -huh. I have never tried them either. How do you find them? They're very soft on the. I think. Yeah. Um, um, I, so I just got this really fun, like really bright turquoise. Can you see that? <laughs> it's oh like, wow. Because I like the way they organize colors. Yeah, um, you are right. It's very soft and um, it's it's almost like a unison. Okay. Um, I like it. But, but unison is not that soft. No, no, it's it, it's it's almost between a unison and a Terry Ludwig. It's. Okay. Actually, it would be more like a unison and a great American. I have the great American and those oh. are really soft. You, yeah, um, exactly. I got um, one of my first set, I got, they have an animal set. And I got okay. that. I was very disappointed because first of all, the color names are absurd. I, I mean, but uh, it's just too soft for what I want to do. Yeah, the great American. Yeah. I yeah. almost never use it. Yeah. Um, they are very, very soft. I was thinking about waves and I thought, well, I like I love doing waves and water and um we're gonna be going into next month with the reflections and the streams and water. And so I was thinking 
what pastel brand have I not tried? And so, um, and I got Mount Vision. I tried them. I didn't like them. They're very yeah. good value, though. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of those. They're different. Um, and you know what I'm finding for everyone, too, if you can, is uh, if you get a couple sets, those are good. But now I'm kind of buying uh, sticks of different brands um, right. and and seeing what I like. So that's that's kind of what I've branched out and I'm trying. And I know like Dakota Pastels, I'm not sure if they ship overseas or not. They're here in Washington, um, but it's all pastels. It's called Dakota Pastels. They actually do like a sampler box and they have um, maybe seven or eight different types. They've got a Diane Townsend, they've got a Terry Ludwig, a Unison, they've got, you know, these brands. And it's like, you can try, and it's all in maybe like a dark set, or you can have a light set. So it's kind of value set as well. I'll pull up an example. Uh, I haven't ordered one, but I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, you mean value um, like color? I'm thinking, oh, it's a bargain. <laughs> yeah, I know. It kind of seems so. Let me find, uh, I'll get on their website and show you. It's called Past, uh, Dakota Pastels Pastel Samplers. And they've got a soft sampler, a medium hard sampler. And so let's just pick the soft blue sampler. Um, and I'll click on it and I'll send you a picture. Um, so you kind of see what I'm talking about. And I'd actually like to do this because I'm getting to the point where I would like to try out um, some different brands. Yeah, it's good to know what you like, you know, for what you do, it's very useful. I think it's important. Um, so in this box that I just sent you, we've got Sin uh, we've got Great American, looks like a Diane Townsend, looks like a Geralt, uh, Mount Vision, Unison, a couple Terry Ludwigs. So um, let's see. So they send you Blue Earth, Art Spectrum, Geralt, Great American, Mount Vision, Schmanke, Sunnier, Rick, Rickson, Hand Rolled, Terry Ludwig, um, the Townsend Soft, and the Unison. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty much for anything, everything you need to know. Yep. Um, and it says it's fifty-five dollars for all of those. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's twelve pastel sticks, and they're usually like, I don't know, four to seven dollars a piece. So that's a pretty good value. And I'll um, I'll send you the link too. But they're great. They're super nice. Um, they also have samplers for um, paper. So uh, I did that. I ordered the sampling paper. Yeah. But I think very little can beat pastel mat. Yeah, I just got a couple large sheets of pastel mat, so I'm excited to, to practice and play around with it too. Um, but anyhow, all right, we're, we're coming down to the end. Send over way. Oh, good. Well, that looks great. Yeah. That's really pretty with that purple. It's really, really nice. Good job. Yeah, good fun. I enjoyed that one. Isn't it fun? It, it's so amazing how <laughs> how many different colors are in the this the sunset. <laughs> it's like crazy. Because I almost kind of passed on it, and then I kind of zoomed in on it, and I was like, you know, there's actually quite a bit going on in this thing. And it's fun to play with um, with your pastel and seeing like the different marks you can make because I really do like the texture part too.
Yeah. That looks great, Natalia. Woo! Thank Some you. Fire. <laughs> Love this it. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully next time uh, you'll get your paper in too. That will help. Yeah. But you did a really good job, despite. I don't oh, hate yeah. this paper even. I it's it's different, but I don't have strong negative feelings. That's good. That's <laughs> just, good. It's uh, I know people that don't like it, but it's uh, I don't know. Well, that's why it's important for all of us to try out what you like because. But that's why I was saying that that pastel sampler is good because I'm learning what pastels I like for the style that I tend to paint, right? And that's that's what we're learning is is your style is coming out, the way you make your marks, and some pastels just do better for you and expressing what you want, and that's that's what you want. So. Um, I think it's wonderful and try as many, I mean, that's kind of, I'm just starting to expand um, the brands more and more um, and finding out what I like. So yeah, try out your paper too. Um, I am looking forward to pastel mat though. This, this is the one I ordered. <laughs> oh, you're you're going to love it. it. You're going to love it. Um, it doesn't, it, it blends differently, but it you wouldn't think that it would take as much pastel as it does. That's what's shocking to me. Because it's so smooth when, I know. You, when you finger on it. You never hurt your fingers rubbing it. No. Yeah. These look beautiful. I love it. Yep. So I'm, I'm going to... Uh, stop recording here in a few minutes. I'll um, let it upload on my computer and then Leah's got a website that I'm gonna, or a shared drive that I'm going to upload to. And so um, instead of her recording on her computer, I'm gonna record it here. So it should take about an hour or so to upload. Um, I'm going to go get my first vaccine shot here today. So I'm gonna- Oh, well done. Leave Which one here. are you getting? Uh, it's the Moderna. Okay. So, so yeah, so I'm going to leave here shortly. Um, so it will, it will get uploaded, but I don't know like when you can access it. So I'll make sure that it's on there uh, right when I come back. Um, but uh, all right. So I will.